Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with some Total War news. I hope you all are enjoying the new update. I know I sure am. Um, yeah, we're going to be settling in for a uh, reasonably long time before the next DLC. They do mention when they're shooting for in this uh, development update, but we do have another dev update blog. So we're going to be diving into this, checking in with the Total War teams to see what they are up to. So, first they're going to start out with Three Kingdoms. I haven't been playing a Three Kingdoms a ton on the channel, just because obviously my focus is on Total War Warhammer multiplayer. Um, but they do go through a number of things here. They do talk a bit about uh, Eight Princes. Um, they do say that they're aware that players, a lot of players weren't really super happy with the DLC. It was reasonably successful, so they will be going through a few more chapter packs. They really like the idea, so we'll see whether it sticks for the community or not. Um, they do talk about the uh, upcoming chapter packs, but they do say, yes, absolutely, Nan Man are coming. So, um, I had previously speculated that we wouldn't see any other culture groups outside of, you know, Han Chinese uh, for DLC. And I guess this does somewhat prove me wrong, so I'm actually very happy to see this. Um, they do say before, then, over the next year, though, so Nan Man's probably going to be late 2020 or later, potentially. Um, we're still going to be seeing a number of other chapter packs first, looking at specifically the Yellow Turban Rebellion, the Liang Province Rebellion, and the Clash of Cao Cao versus Lu Bu in the Central Plains. And there's also a free update coming in October, so uh, should see news probably starting, I'd imagine, at the start of October as to what that free update will entail, but looks like they're going to be giving some love to Three Kingdoms. Uh, certain characters will be getting new unique artwork for the main campaign. Hopefully they give some of the second generation um, guys some unique artwork, because the, the main thing I found is that once you get into that second generation in your campaign in Three Kingdoms, your all of your legendary heroes are gone and it's all just generic Joes with, you know, generic art and silly faces. So I really would like to see some of the second generation, you know, like maybe some of Cao Cao's sons or uh, or Liu Bei's sons or whatever, um, like with, with uh, Sun Jian, you obviously you you have his kids, you know, fully realized, but yeah, hopefully they get some, some love in that way. Um, yeah, they do say that they have quite a lot of plans for Three Kingdoms in the long term, so definitely be looking more into that. As for what you guys are mostly here for, it's it's Warhammer, right? So let's jump into it. Um, I It's pretty interesting how they've phrased certain things here, and I do think that this is very intentional, uh, the way that they've kind of talked about things here. Um, and I'm not going to point fingers at anyone specifically, but just check your expectations, guys, as to what they can add from the game. Yes, they have added some unofficial content, but it's all been, it's all had to be approved by, uh, Games Workshop, and much of it, like the Vampire Coast, did have some basis in some printed content, some official printed content that being the White Dwarf magazine. So, um, they do talk here, you know, obviously the Warhammer trilogy has been wildly successful, um, but here, we explained that we wanted to interpret as much of the Warhammer fantasy world as we'd be allowed to. Take note of that specific language. Um, they talk about, again, how successful everything has been, thanks for all the support, we do want everyone to bear in mind that there's a lot of content out there that is unofficial and fan-created. I would add to this sentence, a lot of it is exceptionally high-quality fan-created content, so much so to where you may even be fooled into thinking that it is official content if you didn't know better. Just bear that in mind. We're working with Games Workshop to realize as much of the Warhammer Fantasy Battles the world as we can, but of course there are limits to what is possible given the amount of content that has been officially created over the years. And this content is our source material for the game. So, what does this mean? It means, like I said, check your expectations. A lot of the unofficial type content that, uh, you know, people seem to think is official content, likely is not coming to the game. 
Um, that being said, you know, Creative Assembly has already implemented Vampire Coast. Technically, they were not an official faction. They created Siloster Diaphan as a whole new original character. Do not steal. Um, you know, Norska wasn't, I mean, uh, all those units were in the lore, many of them were in the tabletop, but it, they didn't have a cohesive roster as Norska, right? So, um, really, I think they're just trying to sort of cushion us to not receive certain things. And I don't know, you know, Kids Life, I, I would imagine, is is so popular and, and you know, well-known that Especially for Game 3, which they'll talk more about in a minute. I do think that Kislev is something that they will work with Games Workshop to produce. Uh, they do say, Great news is that our collaboration together has already led to amazing things, and rest assured, there's plenty more to come. So, again, we're going to be seeing more content, potentially some more sort of obscure stuff from back in the day, from the early days of Games Workshop. Anything that was officially created is on the table, but just keep in mind, guys, that when you're looking for content, when you're watching these missing units videos or watching speculation videos on, on other people's channels about, you know, how things could be implemented, they may be fooled into thinking that some of this unofficial content is even official content or may suggest it as, you know, uh, something that is going to be implemented in the game. So just be discreet, you know, um, be be discerning, keep your eyes open and just, just try and understand that, you know, it's, it's only going to be officially produce content or stuff that Creative Assembly gets approved by Game Wor Games Workshop, right? So anyway, let's talk more about the upcoming DLCs, have more Warhammer 2 DLC on the way, and of course, the third part of the trilogy is deep into production, with the largest part of our Total War project teams revved up. So they are moving on to the real meat and potatoes of development of Game 3 as we speak, which for me is super, super exciting along with something else that they say later on in this same part of the post. It's got me really, really excited. Uh, we're aiming for our next Warhammer 2 DLC and free LC to be out for Festag. So that's, uh, what, Christmas? Um, and as mentioned in the recent patch notes, we're planning a number of fixes and improvements rather than revisiting an old world race in conjunction with this one. We hope you'll like what we have planned and not to worry because, yes, green skins will be updated next year. Okay, so... Confirmed the next update probably is not going to be green skins I thought that they would visit the green skins next because they are uh, the only sort of uh, Base game one faction that has not had a, a rework yet but um, It does look like it will be one of the others so If we're if we're assuming that this is going to be another, you know, Warhammer 1 versus Warhammer 2 Lord pack then the clear choice for me would be the dwarfs versus the Skaven because the Dwarfs have already had their rune crafting system, they've already had their rework, right? So it would make sense then for them to just get a, like a Lord pack, some new units, you know, new regiments of renown, new Lord, obviously, and the same for the Skaven. So uh, potentially I think that's a pretty good option as well. I guess we could see like Vampire Counts versus um, Dark Elves, but somehow I don't... I don't know that they would give the Vampire Counts. I don't know. Maybe they would give the Vampire Counts the DLC. Creative Assembly seems to love the Vampire Counts, considering they have more lore choices than anyone else in the game. But anyway, that's that's a topic for another time. Um, yes, something we're also experimenting with is talking more about upcoming content and giving you more of a sense of scale as to when you can expect updates. So um, they do talk a bit about, you know, delays, how they announced delays for Three Kingdoms and how the response to that was generally positive. Personally, I was a big fan of when they announced that they were going to delay Three Kingdoms because I think, uh, you know, it. they should take the time to get it right, in my opinion, right? So, uh, it seems most of the community felt the same way and they generally have, have uh, taken that feedback to heart and as a result, they, they'll be hopefully sharing a little bit more in advance as to what they're working on. Um, it is a bit risky for them, though, like they said, um, if people get if, if they, you know, build up some expectations and then they don't meet them, people will get upset, right? And understandably so. So, um, this is the final part that I kind of wanted to mention earlier in relation to the development of Warhammer 3. For what it's worth, in case you ever doubt uh, how closely we heed player feedback, we've blown a full stack of skill points on leveling up your wants and needs. So, they talk a bit more about, you know, how they're going about 
taking in more player feedback. They now have a dedicated player experience manager whose uh, work it is to scrutinize every channel. So not only like literally YouTube channels, I'm sure, but like Reddit, uh, you know, the forums, any, any, any social media platform where people can express their feelings about the game, games even. And uh, they are feeding that information, you know, they're compiling it, you know, weighting it, prioritizing it, and then giving it directly to designers. So I'd assume that many of those designers, the lion's share of those designers right now are going to be working on Warhammer 3, right? So they are taking in a lot of player feedback. And just from a content creator standpoint, I can confirm that this last early access um, time period was the best in terms of you know, the, the Creative Assembly's community managers were constantly asking us for feedback. They were constantly, you know, uh, asking us how they could improve. They were providing really, really great support for us. Um, not only asking feedback about the game and definitely taking it to heart, um, you know, and, and, and giving our, our suggestions serious credibility. Not only that, but also... Um, like asking how they can help us as content creators better, right? Like for the next early access, you know, um, marketing promotion period, how can we as Creative Assembly help you as a content creator, right? And they were being a lot more proactive this time around about doing that. So from my own perspective, just with my own interactions with Creative Assembly staff and everything, it has been, you know, a definite step up in terms of them taking in player feedback so i personally am very excited about this a lot of great great content coming up and honestly i didn't think we would get another dlc for total war warhammer 2 before the end of the year so hopefully i mean they said they're aiming for festag obviously it could be uh pushed back but let's keep our fingers crossed you know do some little little spells and prayers to sigmar and <laughs> hope hope that the dlc does get released on time so um yeah they also finish up here with the saga just quickly saying that yeah thrones of britannia was a little bit divisive they weren't super happy with how it uh, hit hit the mark they're going to continue to experiment with sagas so i'm generally interested to see uh see um you know what what this space has coming soon It'll, it should be interesting so that's all for today hopefully you guys enjoyed this news update if you did like this be sure to give it a like subscribe if you want daily total war warhammer multiplayer content and occasionally even a bit of news thank you once again and we'll see you next time